Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyami Yavay Dezar Daf Nantes. We begin on Nul Chesam and Beis. It is seven lines off the, t- off the bottom of the Ahmed. We begin once again with a story. A story on the topic of Yai Nesach, of course. Okay, so first we have Rish Lakish. Ikla le Batra. So he came to, to Batra. Batra actually is a town in, uh, it's a city in Bavel, way outside Eretz Yisrael. But there, there is a Pasuk that mentions uh, a similar name, Betzer, Betzer by Midbar, which is actually part of, uh, part of Eretz Yisrael. So he mistook one for the other. He noticed, Chazi Yisrael de Kochli Peri, de Loima Asri. He notices Yidin uh, sitting and eating, you know, Peri's fruit, produce, without concerns of Maser. They weren't separating the Truman and the Maser. And he says, what are you doing? Vasalu, you forbade it for them. You can't until you... Um, Number two, Chaza Mayo, the Sagdi Luhu, Oyde Kechav, Vishasu Yisrael. Then he notices another, another thing. Maya, he sees a water, a stream of water, that Goyim worship, they bow to it, the Sagdi Luhu, they bow to it, Oyde Kechav, and the, the Eden would then go and drink that water, Vishasu Yisrael. He says, What are you doing? Vasalu. He says, You can't drink that water, it's the Zara material. So he comes to Asal um, Kamed Rabbi Yechanan. He comes back there to Yisrael, to Rabbi Yechanan, and relates to him the, uh, the incident. I noticed them doing this and that, and I, I forbade it. Amr Leis, Rabbi Yechanan tells him, quickly, go back. Take the first plane back. Don't even take off your, your coat. Adamak Tairach. While your robe is still Allah on you, while you're still wearing your, your coat. Zil Hadar, quickly go back and correct it. And permit it. It's a mistake. Because Betzer, the, the town Betzer, mentioned in the Pasuk, Love Hainu Batra, that's not the same as Batra. Batra is not Eretz Yisrael. You can have uh, uh, pay race without Truma and Master. No problem. And regarding the Avedizar issue, Umayim Shal Rabim Eina Sarin. Water which belongs to the Rabin, the public. It's a public uh, body of water, a lake, a river. It belongs to the... Nobody can affect it. Because, as we learned many times, ain't Adam Oyser. One doesn't have the power to prohibit, to ban, to impact. Davar she'en ishilai, something which belongs to somebody else. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Tamei Rabbi of course, is in line with his personal opinion, stated elsewhere, that uh, a public you know, body of water is unaffected by uh, this type of Avedizara worship. Don't Rabbi Yechonah Mishum, Rabbi Shimon ben Yoyit Sadok, he quotes the halacha that Maim shall rob him ain't a So, uh, if it's a body of water belonging to the rabbim, it doesn't become Masra. Because one cannot adversely impact somebody else's property. So, I think, okay, but that's only because it belongs to the rabbim. Suppose it's a privately owned pond, private stream of water. How do you were it to belong to a private indi- individual, you're indicating that this type of conduct, on account of its owner, Ne'asarim, would prohibit that water. Asks the Gemara, what do you mean? Fine, it's his. But it's Mechubar Lakarka, it's an in ground landmark, in ground body of water. Something which is Mechubar, a mountain, a hill, even a stream of water. We learned this many times, right? It's unaffected by the Zara conduct. Let's set aside the ownership issue. There's another reason why it's unaffected. Because it's to the, to the ground. So how can it become Asr if it's privately owned? Leitzricha must be speaking the Talshinu Gala. A gal, a wave sort of disconnected from the body of water. So, yeah, in that case, it's no longer Mechubar. It's disconnected from the actual source. And that could become Asr, if it's privately owned. Well, so if safe Avni Har, Shinadadaluninu. But if you recall, we had a similar discussion regarding the boulders, which started rolling off the mountain. So the mountain itself is Mechubar, unaffected by the Dezara conduct. What about those boulders, which have sort of detached from the mountain? On the one hand, they're part of the mountain. On the other hand, right? They're not man-made. On the other hand, they're objects, items, like anything else. They're disconnected from the karka. 
We had a discussion, a machlaik, it's between Chizkia and Rabbi Yehuda, uh, um, sorry, the, um, the children of Rabbi Chia, one was Chizkia and Rabbi Yehuda, and on the other side of the equation we had Rabbi Yechanan, right, they had that machlaik is, this was back on Dachmem Vav, whether or not uh, th- these um, items are considered by the Zara if, if worshipped. So this, um, this wave that has sort of detached itself from the primary body of water, but by itself, detached if it's considered a desert material, if worshipped by its owner, right, such as Rabbi Yechanan's statement, um, wouldn't that indicate to us regarding Rabbi Yechanan's opinion by those uh, boulders as well? And if you recall, we weren't really sure who said what. Who took which, which position on that topic? So perhaps based on our discussion today, we can conclude with certainty to time to Rabbi Yechanan. He's the one who in fact says that when something was initially connected and then sort of disconnected on its own, like those stones, like this wave. Dhamma who says, Asur, is there Asur? Says the Gemara, not so quick. Perhaps our case is a bit different. Leitzricha must be speaking the Tavchinu Biyade. The guy detached. He slapped that water out of the... Right? He sees it like a wave and psh, banged it out. So he detached it. So it's a man-made phenomenon, in which case, certainly, if, if, if worshipped, would become Avi Desar, and it's uh, dissimilar to the case of the boulders, which just started rolling off on their own. There was no, without human involvement. Okay, on to the next story. Rab Bar Abba. He came, Ikla le Gavla, to this place called Gavla, and notices things which made him very sad. First of all, Chazay notices, Benois Yisrael, the Ma'abra, and Ma'abra, the Jewish women, who had uh, sort of married Goyim, and were impregnated by the Goyim, and these Goyim had undergone a partial conversion. They did Mila, but they didn't do Tefillah. So they hadn't really completed their conversion process. So what's the status of these uh, children born from these Jewish mothers? Number two, he saw Chaza Chamra, he saw the wine being prepared by the Goyim. And Yidin were drinking. The Goyim were mixing, diluting the wine and you know, the water. And uh, the Yidin were drinking it. So although they didn't actually touch the wine, they were just pouring the water into the wine, but there was a Goyish interaction with that wine, and perhaps you can speculate that the two things are connected, perhaps. The, uh, one of the reasons why we keep away from the Goyish wine is to avoid, to uh, you know, minimize our engagement and our interaction with them, lest it lead to further interaction, social interaction and marriage. And look what happened. They were less than careful with respect to Goyish wine, a wine handled by Goy, and look what happened. It led to intermarriage, which is exactly what it's trying to or trying to avoid. So that was the next point. And thirdly, Chaza Musa, he sees these beans, the Shalkilu Ebgecham, that Goyim would cook them, Vaachli Yisrael, the would eat it. Without any concern about uh, Bishul Akam, which again is meant to present that sort of barrier between us and them. And for some reason, he didn't respond. He didn't respond. So he came back and visited Rabbi Yechanan and related to him what he saw. Also, came with Rabbi Yechanan. So this time, Rabbi Yechanan tells him, quickly turn around and, <laughs> and tell him what they're doing wrong. Amalie um, says, Say, go out, and announce and declare Al Bnei on their children, Shemam Zerim. They're Mam Zerim. Because they were fathered by the Gaim. Number two, regarding their wine, it's forbidden as well. And thirdly, the beans, it's also Asr. They're cooked by Goyim. Now, technically, although beans cannot be eaten raw, so it requires that cooking process, but we know that for something to be considered problematic, when cooked by a Goyim, it must be material that is fit for royal dinner, royal table. I was going to see later. So technically, these beans are not really fit for that purpose. But Rabbi Yechanan was applying a strictness in this case, and the reason is that because he knew that these people in Gavla were not the most learned and uh, you know adherent people. So he has to reinforce, in order to sort of uh, you know reinforce the the uh, observance of the Torah. So he had to give them an extra chumrah, and he forbade even these beans, which were technically okay, so that it shouldn't lead to you know really problematic situations. So he kept it a step away. So this is a chumrah. So basically, 
he forbade all these things. And the Gemara will explain it one by one. Number one, al bnei she mamzerim. The children are considered mamzerim. So although typically we know that a mamzer is only something which is generated by way of a of a rais within our community, but if it happens via interaction with a guy, although there's an adverse effect on the child, but it's not a mamzer. Rabbi Yechon, however, disagrees. Rabbi Yechon Tamei, Rabbi Yechon is going like his shita, the Rabbi Yechon, the Eilu Meinu Ger, Atshe Yimel Well, firstly, regarding the Geisha status. He only is considered a Ger if he goes through both stages of that conversion process, Mila and Tefillah. But in this case, V'chivan, since the Loi Tavl, since they did not do Tefillah, Oi Veit Kechavim, we still consider it a guy. That's number one. And that leads to a Mamzer, in Rabbi Yechon's opinion. Vama Rabba, Bar Bar Chana, Am Rabbi Yechon, Oi Veit Kechavim Ve'evet, a guy, or a Geisha slave, Habab as Yisrael interacts with a Jewish woman, that ensuing child is a mamzer, a blood mamzer. And that's why you're meant to label them as such. Regarding that wine that was prepared by the Goyim, Let's treat it like a Nesach, you know why? Although technically it's not. There was no contact, there was no real interaction, it was just pouring. Like we learned yesterday, it's called Kayach, it wasn't really... Nevertheless, you can't drink it. Mishum, the reason is because we want to keep a distance from anything that even smells like Ayin Esach. Mishum, leich, leich, amr, nezir, we tell the Nazar, who may not drink wine, Keep far away from the vineyard. Don't take chances. Schur, schur, around and around. Take a long route. Lacharm le sikrav, and don't get near the vineyard. So even though there was no contact, it was just kayach, right? Because you're just pouring the water into the wine, it still is going to be asr. Asr for drinking. And finally, while Tormusam Shem Bishulab Kacham treat their beans with the isr of Bishul Akum. And that's only because the Fishain of Neitera, they're not the most adhering people. So we want to keep that extra reinforcement. Says the Gemara, Tama. So you mean to say, the only reason why he forbade those beans is because they ain't of Neitera, they're not Neitera. But otherwise, ha, oh, let's say they would be Neitera. So you don't have to come, you know, down hard on them because they're conformists and we can tell them what's good and what's no good and they won't mix things up. So it would, be, it would be okay to have these beans. Sorry, really? But you can't eat these beans raw. V'amar Rav Shmuel Rav Yitzhak, Amar Rav, Kol Shonechel K'mayshu Chai, any food that technically can be eaten raw, it's edible raw. So then, Ein Ba Mishim B'Shulei Avdi Kacham, if the guy cooks it, it doesn't affect its status, because as Rashi in Mesechus Beis says, he didn't do much, he didn't accomplish anything. The whole point is to engender closeness to... bring out, you know, feelings and appreciation. He didn't accomplish much. I could have eaten it without his cooking. Not so beans. Who eats beans raw? So, it's usher because it's usher, not because it's a strictness of nei right? Says the Gemara, no. Rabbi Yechon ki hach Rabbi Yechon had a different condition. Required to make it bishuli akam. He held like the other version of Rav, who presents another tenai, another condition. Any food which is not typically served at a royal table, together with the bread, is not considered bishalak. Beans are not served in that context. And therefore, even if he cooked it, it would be okay for us to consume. And therefore, time and day in it only came down hard because they were not bnei Torah. So you had to uh, sort of, you know, create that extra layer of security. Habnator is sure, but otherwise it would be okay. Okay, so to summarize, Prakhir Ba'aba noticed uh, these uh, practices taking place in the town of Gavla. He came back to Rabbi Yechon, who told him to go back and set them straight. Children, Mamzerim, Ya'in Ya'in Esach, and the beans are off limits. Bo so this following question was asked, Miraf Kahana. Can we have a guy transport? Can we use a guy should delivery uh, service to bring our uh, grapes to the wine press? He's not going to press it. He's not going to 
produce it, just delivering. What's the halacha regarding can they bring our grapes to the uh, wine press? Amr Lehu, he says, no, no, us, sir. You may not do that. Why? It's not yet wine. It's not, uh, it's not touching anything. Again, that same refrain. You meant to take extra precaution. Keep, keep them far away from the wine. Eisvei, so the question was posed by Rav Yemar to Rav Kahana. Rav Kahana, he says, you tell me you can't? We have a price that it's okay. A guy that delivered the grapes to the, uh, to the press. Besal in baskets, or bedar, bedudurin, in these uh, little containers. Even if you see that there is juice oozing out of the grapes, and there's, right? Running on the grapes. So you have actual tangible liquid. Mutter, it's okay. And Tysus points out, even if the guy touched it, it's not yet considered wine, because as we learned the other day, it doesn't achieve its yayin, wine status, until the grapes have been pressed, and the water is, uh, the juice is, is trickling into the pit, etc. But at this early stage, it's not considered wine. And even if a guy touched it, it will be okay. It's mutter. And you're telling me you can't have a guy do this uh, work for you? Amr he says, listen, big difference between after the fact and before the fact. Havi, the Bryce that you quoted, Commerce is speaking after. He brought it already. Havi, Commerce, you're proving from after the fact? I I was giving you advice before the fact. You asked me, should he do it? No. You shouldn't allow him to do it. Keep him far away from the operation. But of course, after the fact, if he did it, it's okay because it's not yet. Why? Here comes another story. How Esraig, there was an Esraig. An Esraig, the Nafal Chavis and the Chamra slipped into this uh, wine barrel. So the guy was sitting there. Oy, the asterisk, the pitim's going to break. He quickly jumped up and he grabbed the asterisk. He stuck his hand into the barrel of wine to salvage the asterisk. Idri jumped up. Oy, would come a guy with shakla and he grabbed the asterisk and the wine. So at this point, we're still safe because you see clearly his intention was simply to salvage the asterisk. He wasn't thinking wine. He was thinking asterisk. So that's a, a, up until this very moment. But going forward, you have to be careful. Once his hand is in there, you never know what he has in mind. Omalu Rav Ashi. So Rav Ashi told the people, quickly, grab his hand, disable his hand. Keep it motionless. No, to grab his hand. So he doesn't slosh the wine. Bay in the barrel. Uber And as you're holding his hand still, tilt that barrel. And pour out the wine, add the shaif until it's fully empty. Because otherwise, you never know what he might do on his way out. Hamar Rav Ashi, here comes another story. Rav Ashi says like this, Halacha. What happens if a guy purposely took your wine and he poured it? to his knowing that it's going to forbid your wine. He damaged your wine, basically, right? So this wine is now truly Yainesach. You can't drink it. You can't even sell it to a guy and be paid for that wine. Question. Can I charge the guy for damages? See, on the one hand, you can say it's just damages. On the other hand, I'm getting paid for that wine now. He's taking the wine and paying me for it. Even though you can't sell it to a different guy, you can't make money off this forbidden wine, but you have a right to demand payment. The value of that wine from the guy who damaged it. Why? My time, why is that so? Mikla Kalye. You're not selling it. Look, he destroyed your wine. Okay? So, Mikla uh, Kalye, he burnt it, basically. It's an expression. He destroyed it. So, you want to pay for it? Fine, you can take it, but pay for it. So you're not technically selling it, you're just getting paid, you're compensated for your loss. That's not called Hanoah from wine. Um, Ravashi bin Aminila says, Ravashi, how do I know this great Chiddush that it's permitted? The Sani Rav Abrais, which speaks about this type of concept. So go actually pour Jewish wine. So it was done far away, not in the presence of the idol. It's still also because the guy would pour even at a distance. It's considered a desire. However, Rabbi Dibam Bava and Rabbi Dibam Maseram Atiram, they allow you to, to have enough from the wine. Again, you can't drink it because as we discussed many times, if there's any direct contact, it's Maga, it's Asr Bishtiya. But in terms of considering it real, they say no, no problem. For two reasons. Number one, Echad. This is not the standard mode of making Yain 
unless it's doing he's doing it in front of his idol. Shein manaschin yain el befnei goyim typically don't do nisach unless it's in front el befnei avitzkechum. So there's no concern of real yain nisach. Aside from that factor, suppose it's asr. Okay, I can still demand compensation. Vecha number two, Sha'im Loi, you can tell the guy who damaged his wine, who poured his wine, listen, you have no business destroying my wine, pay me for it. Loi kal himenach, it's not within your ability, meaning you have no right. Shetai sir, you ain't no to force me against my will and destroy my wine. So Rashi points out, although we're not going to agree, the halacha doesn't really adopt the first, uh, you know, rationale presented by these Tanoim, we hold that even. At a distance, even shaloi b'fnei have a desire. It's called nisuch, but at least we can we can certainly adopt a second point. If the guy damaged, the guy ruined my wine, I can demand repaint. It comes yet another story. Oh, chavisa, there was a sparrow, the chamra of wine, the shtakel lebarza. So the uh, the spig of the spout came shooting out. Okay, it fell out of the. They basically they had a barrel of wine closed on all sides, and they would punch a hole with this sort of spigot, which was used as a faucet. The spigot slipped out, and the wine shooting out. So the guy, trying to be helpful, jumped up and he plugged the hole with his finger. Also, I would he jumped up, Anach Yodei Ilevo, placed his hand to plug the hole. By doing so, he touched the wine within, but only that portion of wine, right? The part that's right near his hand, you know, the point of contact. Amra Papa, okay, called the Lahadi Barza. Only the wine which is right near that spigot hole, which the guy actually touched. Only that, us sir, you can't drink. But um, but you can sell the whole barrel, you can have a gnaw. Rashi explains because there was no shikh shikh. He didn't slosh, he didn't move the wine, he was just uh, a little teeny hole, he didn't have uh, where to wiggle his finger. So at most it's just a, a contact, just a maga. The maga clearly just to salvage the wine. It wasn't for the sake of nis. So it's maga shle bekavo. It's 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 muter bahano. So you shouldn't drink that bit of wine. But uh, certainly you can sell it and have ano from the whole barrel. Bidach shori. And the rest of the barrel, the rest of the material is muter even to drink. If there's a way for you to get it, you know, to separate the two. There was an, another version of Rapapa's response, which turns out to be a bit more strict. Amra Papa Anta Barza. So, all, all the wine from the top of the barrel until the point of the spigot, since it's sort of um, leading into that point, it's, it's sort of um, all draining in that direction. Chamra, so that wine is Usr. So that part uh, should not be drunk. The rest of the wine, right? So uh, from, the, uh, from that point below, from the spigot below, sure, you can even drink. Totally mutter. So it's a cooler because basically you're separating different elements of that of the wine within the same barrel. You're saying, well, this part is, has been you know, tampered with, this part not. Tasis actually asks, how could you separate this uh, layer of wine from the other layer? It's all one big you know, mix. So he learns that um, you can't drink any. He meant to allow the rest behano. Okay, in any case, but, but Rashi does, does say that it's muta bishtiya. Comes Rav Yemar, Omar Rav Yemar, he says, actually, it's not so simple, Ketanoi, this uh, question is really subject to Machlegis Tanoi. This question of whether uh, you can actually separate the different you know, layers of wine in the barrel, or, uh, or do we look at it as one entity, is uh, connected to Machlegis Tanoi in a Mishnah full Yoim, which doesn't, it's not discussing Yoim, it's discussing Tuma. The person who's Tami, who plugs the, the, the hole in the barrel, what happens to the entire barrel? Everything gets affected, or just a part of the uh, wine. Chav is shenikva, so the uh, barrel got a hole. Be'mi peh, whether on top, on the, you know, through the lid. Be'mi shuleh, whether on bottom. Or be'mi tzadeh, whether off to the side. V'nogam o t'vul yayim. Comes along a t'vul yayim, a fellow who had already re- immersed in a mikvah after becoming tamay, so he immersed in a mikvah, but he hadn't yet experienced nightfall, so his tahara process is not yet complete. 
so he's uh, somewhat tummy and uh, and will uh, taint the, the wine upon contact. So wherever he plugged, whether on top, on bottom, on the side, you can't differentiate. It's one big unit of wine. Why? Because, let's say, for instance, he touched the top layer. Well, everything beneath it is connected. It's a buses. It's, it's serving as a, as a base. Like on Shabbos, you have buses, or or something, which is supporting Mokta, right? It's like a, it's like a base to the uh, upper layer, which is Asr. It's all one big entity. Likewise, when he touches the bottom layer, right? Due to uh, gravity uh, factors, everything ultimately is going to be draining to the bottom. So it's all one big continuous entity. Likewise, it touches the, the side. Again, you can't differentiate because um, suppose he touches it midway up, right? So again, the pot that's above is draining to that hole. Ultimately, is heading to that hole. So it's all one big uninterrupted entity. And regarding the portion that's below it, again, that's a buses serving as a support to hold up the, uh, the layer above it. So it's all one big happy family. It's all tummy. You can't differentiate. Bidaimer, Bidaimer says, well... You could differentiate. Yeah, if you touch the, the top or the bottom, that you can't separate from the rest. Because again, if you cut touches the top, so everything is supporting that. If you touches the bottom, everything is heading that direction. But if you touches the side, then you can say, well, it's different. It's different. That um, only the, uh, the spot that he touched is usur. But the, uh, the wine off to the sides is okay. And this would, in fact, be in line with Rapapa, right? Rapapa would differentiate it between this part and that part. But uh, as Rashi says, when well, there's a is between a Yachid and a Rabbim, such as Rabbi Yudan and the Chacham, we pass them like the majority, the Rabbana. In which case, we don't view the barrel as separate entities, as separate layers. It's all one big body of liquid. So by touching one part, you matami everything. Likewise, by the guy touching one part, he taints the entire barrel. Okay, so for a brief summary of today's daf, we, just, we start with a story of Rish Lakish who came to Batra. He told him off on a number of items, which were then corrected by Rav Yechanan. On the other hand, we have Rav Chiyah Abba came to Gavla and did not set them straight. He came back to Rav Yechanan, sent them right back to put them in their place. Mamzerim. Chathil, you shouldn't have the guy deliver those grapes, but the evidence is okay. The guy with the esrig was saved just in time. We have the, um, the hetzer to uh, allow the guy to compensate you for lost wine. It's not considered hanar from the wine. It's just compensating for, uh, for damages rather than being considered hanar from that wine. And we have the uh, idea of the uh, spigot that flew out and was plugged by the guy. Rapapa was not there, a part of it, but uh, according to our Maskana, the prevailing view is the whole thing would become affected as it's considered one single body of liquid. All the best to you and Hatzlachar.